Hi, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's live production of the VTUG Winter Warmer. We're here live at Gillette Stadium. Mike McDermott is here. He's a vice president with Nexan. Nexan's a company that uh, has been around for a while and certainly known for their very high density arrays. They're getting into the hybrid uh, 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 flash storage business. Uh, a recent acquisition, uh, maybe not that recent, by Imation. Uh, Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Very so, nice to be here. So what do you think of this venue? Pretty, pretty good, you know, you're sort of an enemy territory being from New York and all, but... Uh, well, when you come up the uh, escalators and elevators and it says uh, EMC, you know you're in enemy territory. <laughs> uh, but no, it's been my uh, third or fourth year uh, here and it's, uh, it's a great venue. Real good uh, interaction at the booths. Uh, get a chance to do some breakout sessions, so it has been uh, a real good event for Nexan. So Nexan's an interesting company. Uh, they've they've gone through a number of of, of of transitions and ridden some waves. I mean, for a while there, sort of prior to the downturn in 2008, 2009, Nexan's you know claim to fame was very high density storage. There was a big green IT push. You remember that? Correct. And and Nexan fit very well because of the the cost efficiencies and, and economics, and probably probably through the downturn, you know survive pretty well. Correct. Um, so Nexan's clearly a survivor, and now with all this flash coming on, you guys have, have, have become more of a hybrid array company, right? So let's talk a little bit more about, about Nexan, what's new these days, how the Imation acquisition's working out, and what's, what's, what's new there. Yeah, I think one of the things that Nexan has brought to the table, and we have for the last 13 years, is that tier two, dense storage, uh, the big storage users, whether it be the labs, whether it be the uh, NFL films, whether it be the uh, entertainment, when you had a lot of data that had to be stored, Nexan was a go-to partner. We were the first ones to put 42 drives in a 4U chassis. Uh, they were ATA drives back in the day. They're now, of course, uh, SATA drives with SAS and SSD in them. Uh, and about uh, two years ago, we upgraded to the E-Series, which are faster controllers, more memory, and denser. They can handle four terabyte drives, they can handle SSDs directly. So in a 4U frame, we can still handle 240 terabytes or north of two petabytes in a rack with the MADE technology. Uh, and that is to be able to slow down the disk and save energy. But one of the things that's key today, obviously with VMware and the events that we're in, whether it be uh, vSphere or whatever, is that the disk itself, to a certain extent, is no longer the special repository where five, 10 years ago, oh, my disk is so important, I have to keep all my assets there, buy the most expensive disk. Now with virtualization, what you're beginning to see is the disk is becoming a commodity. You need good, reliable spinning disk with intelligence that lives above it. With that, we've released our hybrid. It's the NST, and we've got the 5,000 model and the 6,000 model, and with that you get file system, snapshots, replication, SIFs, NFS, and then you can take our dense storage and layer it underneath that. And with that is the SSD technology for the IOPS and the flash. So that's one of the advantages of being around for 13 years is you actually have a stack, right? And Correct. Then, and so um, you're seeing a lot of the, uh, uh, say, you know, new flash startups emerge, a lot of action going on, uh, but there's not a lot of software around it. Correct. You know, you mentioned that. So, so at the same time though, you know, they would say, oh, Nexan, they're just bolting flash on. So how do you deal with the advantage of having the stack and the perceived, oh, well, they're just, you know, sticking flash into a, you know, tier two device and, you know, we're better. How do you talk about that? Right, I think one of the things that uh, we really see when it comes to uh, the advantages of Nexan being around for 13 years as we have, and then being uh, acquired by Imation, is that not only do we have the customer base, uh, I would say that we're probably north of 10 to 12,000 customers in 60 countries. So we're able to have the environments that we've been working in. As far as the engineering goes, we've got the, uh, 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 the file system, we've got the engineers to be able to develop and work on that. Uh, the system that we work with is our own proprietary system. So we're not bolting anything on. The storage itself is designed by uh, Nexan. Uh, the drives are pre-tested by Nexan. Our reliability has always been there to just come on with a file system on top of that, whether it be an open file system where somebody just buys our disk or they do buy our NST, it is an integrated system. And the SSD, which is our fast tier layer, can give you the burst in IOPS that you need. Uh, if you think about IOPS, just from a pure IOPS standpoint, 10 years ago, it was a brute force build, right? If you needed 50,000 IOPS, you bought more servers, more power, and more drives. 
But today's environment, especially if you have a VDI booth, for an example, what do you need? You need 3,000 IOPS most of the day and 10,000 IOPS at 9 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon. Do you go spend 200 grand to build 100,000 IOPS? No. You get a system that can have SSD fast here, and as those IOPS come in, it will read up, live in the SSD, serve out the IOPS, and then it'll flush out cash. Some approaches that other companies have taken are all SSD. So, but do you really want to have your data living and written on all SSD? If you've got the money, that's a great idea. So, so, so Mike, you know, you're in the field and you're talking to customers, you yes. know, every, every day pretty much. I'm wondering if you can address for us, you know, what you're seeing specifically, you said, you know, virtualization is coming in, software is managing more pieces. You know, what do you see changing as to how customers think about storage, the role of the storage team and the storage administrator, you know, has that changed in the last few years or what, you know, what do you see in there? It certainly has. I think what we're beginning to see is a lot of the uh, tier one, tier two, and tier three manufacturers all converging in the same space. And if we even go back to EMC where we are since we're in Gillette Stadium, they have come downstream with their products just as Nexan has gone upstream with their products. So the SMB space in the middle is where the battle is. And that is when the uh, IT managers have a limited amount of budget but they're getting a lot more requests, not only for speed, whether that be throughput, but definitely because of virtualization, they have the need to drive more IOPS. And the, the battle in that brackish water between the enterprise and the SMB, where that's meeting, those are the companies that you see here at this event that are competing for that business. So that presumably involves a lot of channel relationships, right? So talk about that a little bit. Why? Why Nexan in that SMB space? Why not the big gorilla? Uh, channel uh, has always been good to Nexan. Uh, we sell through the channel, have always sold through the channel. We're not a direct uh, model uh, company. Uh, we feel that when a VAR has the expertise in whether it be VMware or media environments or Oracle or SQL environments, we can fit their line card for the different specific storage that they need. Quite often, if you go into somebody that is selling strictly to high-end financials, they're going to need one of the big three for the tier one trading desk. But guess what? Off of that comes hundreds of terabytes of tick data. They have to store it and keep it. Is it feasible to keep that on your tier one storage? So we really are able to work with our partners and develop strategies where we become part of the overall solution. And that's really Nexan's core. How is the big data meme affecting Nexan? What you just described is, okay, you got all this data that doesn't have to be on a you know, tier one device, um, you know, the multi-million mm -hmm. dollar box. Uh, I want to put it on a, a tier two or a tier three device, and in comes Nexan, we've got, we've, got, we've got flash when you need it, so yep. you gave your VDI example. How about the big data and analytics, you know, themes that are going on in the industry. How has that affected Nexan, if at all? That has, has a, a affected us in a very positive way because when you come to the big data, quite often you're getting data that is not being accessed similar to a database. It's going to be queried, it's going to be examined, you're going to be running a, a, a data uh, queries against it, and you're going to have to hold a lot of data. Uh, for example, in our E-Series, we can put two and a half petabytes in a single 19-inch rack. So when you have large data users that are going to keep, whether it be mortgage records, credit card records, shopping records, that can then sell that as a service, they need to have that affordable pool of storage. Besides just being able to hold it inexpensively, we have the MADE technology, which is the massive array of vital disks. So if you're not accessing a lung or a volume, you can have that drive sleep down. Power in Europe is essential. It's slowly coming to the U.S. Quite often, you will ask somebody, how important is power? It's a checkbox in the U.S., but the drops, if you have a drop into your data center, you can run it until you run out of power. In Europe, they charge you per watt. So slowly but surely, we're seeing that more and more customers are worried about the power in their racks. So, so, so my quick, quick question on that, you know, we've seen flashes, you know, great for power, really can, yes. can, can lower power, and you know, tape, of course, you know, still is effective. We, we've actually even seen some architectures, uh, our, our CTO, David Floyer, calls it FLAPE, where you have an architecture that's nothing but flash and tape. You know, Imation, you know, it's got some background in tape, oh. and you know, Nexan, you know, where, where, where do you see that, that whole flash disk tape playing out? I think it's very interesting thing, and uh, there were uh, many companies, uh, Nexan, one of them maybe 10 years ago, that said, hey, eventually with the four terabyte and five terabyte drives, tape is going to be dead. 
But that's not certainly not the case because Imation, which is a billion dollar New York Stock Exchange company, when you look at their 10K or their annual report, they're selling hundreds of millions of dollars in tape. Now, percentage wise, it may be a smaller percentage of our business, but guess what? It's a larger percentage of data. Why? Facebook downloads 300 million pictures a day. That's more data in a day than Merrill Lynch had in five years, 10 years ago. So it's a smaller percentage, but it's a tremendous amount of tape. It's an important part. Now, the, the, the key is backup, archive, and DR. Once you have that SLA for your company set, then you're able to pick your strategy. Quite often, people confuse backup with DR and vice versa. If you need an SLA that says, if my environment goes down and I just have to be able to rebuild it in three or four days, tape is spectacular. If you have an environment that says, I need to be up within two hours, then tape is part of it, but it's not the main focus. If you're in a situation where you have less power and you're working with smaller databases that need IOP, the SSD is absolutely perfect. The flash is perfect for that. But flash is very important where you put it in the stack. If you just go all flash and you're working for it with MLC as an example, you can burn out an MLC in a SQL database within a year or two. So if you're investing all that money, you have to know whether you're going MLC, EMLC, SLC, and more importantly, where in the stack you put that. And I think that's what Nexan does very so well. So where do you think you should put flash in the stack? We use flash in the stack for your almost immediate tiering needs. What I mean by that is we don't pick out and put 20 terabytes in our SST and say, okay, run your high applications to let the data live on the flash. We will use the flash as a level two tier. So if all of a sudden a tremendous hotspot comes in and you're hitting the disk and your IOPS and the amount of time between your acts start to climb, we will have that live in disk and the SSD will come down and go into cache. So it's a very good system to offload your spikes in uh, IOPS without actually committing the data to the SSD. Now we certainly have applications where if you had a small metadata target and you wanted to put in three terabytes of SSD and, and, lock, it in there. and lock it in, you do. But typically if you don't have the budget to buy a tremendous amount of storage and have it on SSD, it's great to have a hybrid because the SSD comes in when you need it and the rest of the data lives on a less expensive disk, whether that be 15K or 7200 RPM. How about, to talk a little bit about Imation. Um, they were kind of out of sight, out of mind, in my world anyway. Correct. And then, and then they make the Nexan acquisition, say, oh, I remember that company, and they say, and something to do with tape, and how has that all worked out culturally? You got a Southern California company, kind of a cool vibe going on. Imation, New York Stock Exchange, like you said, billion dollar company, right. tape. Um, how has that worked? What's the fit like? Why did I mention buy Nexan? I think it really it speaks to what's going on uh, in technology and in virtualization and storage. Uh, there's a company that I think about that did photos, Kodak, right? It was one of the biggest companies in America. There were 16 people on the board of directors. How they didn't see Shutterfly and these other companies coming and they got snuck up on and they're out of business now. A company like Imation that's doing a billion five and has a very healthy business in a tape medium that may be shrinking in the environment made a decision. We want to get into the storage, the enterprise flash. How do we do that? Well, you can hire a bunch of guys and build that business, or you can come in and take somebody like Nexan that was looking to go public and acquire them. What they've done with Nexan is, when you take a look at our logo, it is I, uh, Nexan by Imation. So we are running in a stack of the storage part of Imation. The transition has been extremely smooth. They've got a viable business, but what do they bring to us? Extra research, deeper pockets, New York Stock Exchange, but they're worldwide. Distribution channels. Distribution yeah. channels. Australia, Singapore, wherever we need them, we get them. Awesome. All right, Mike, well listen, got to go. Thanks very much for stopping by theCUBE. It was great to no meet problem. you. No problem, thank you All very right, much. Care. Enjoyed thank it, right, thank you. Right there, everybody. We're back with our next guest. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. This is theCUBE, we're live from Gillette Stadium. This is the VTUG Winter Warmer. We'll be right back. <laughs>